Hi, I'm Herr Schild, and so today I want to show you how I'm working with breakbeats on the electron rhythm. So most of what I'm doing in the video will be exactly the same for Mark 1 units, I'm just using the Mark 2 unit because it has this nicer display. So just to give you a brief impression of what we are what we will be doing today, so I have a small excerpt from the last live set that I've played at basement state. Okay, there's quite a bit going on, but so let's focus on the drum breaks for this one. So I have one voice that I allocated for the breaks. And so this is what it sounds in isolation. Okay, and so this is using multiple different drum breaks. And so I can trigger the individual slices with the trigger preview. So if you hold a trigger and press yes, then on the newest firmware, it will play this trigger. So this one is just the aim and break. Um, and this is the Apache break, and it starts somewhere in the middle. And yet another break beat. And so you can see it's just multiple locks. And so let's now look at how to actually do this. So I'll start off from an empty project. So I'll briefly create a new one. And so before we even start, let's briefly review of how sample slicing actually works on the rhythm. So the rhythm doesn't have slicing built in, but so what we do have is that we can offset the sample start position. So what you see on this image here is a sample loaded onto a slot on the rhythm. And so we do have the start parameter that we can change. And so the start parameter it goes from zero all the way to 120. And so let's now assume that we have a drum break loaded to this voice, which has 16 steps or 32 steps. So then we can jump to the middle of the sample by locking 60 as the sample start. And similarly, we can lock 30 to go to one quarter. Here we can lock 90. Uh, that's probably not where 90 is. Let's place it maybe here. And so then we also have the in-between values. So we can also lock 15 here. Here we have 45. Here we have 75. And here we have um, 105. So these are the values where, like, this is the granularity that we can achieve. So if we would want to address smaller slices, then we would have to half, for example, 15, but so we do not have the resolution anymore. So this is as fine as we can get, but um, in my experience, this is good enough for the breakbeat slicing. Okay, so now that we know how to do slicing, let's try to do this in practice. So first you will need to prepare have to prepare a set of breakbeats. And so the preparation you need to do is that you slice all of these breakbeats so that they either have 16 or 32 steps and make sure that they have exactly the same BPM. So that means you need to repitch these samples so that they have exactly the same length. All right, so I do have a few breakbeats here on the rhythm that I have prepared appropriately. And so you can see that all of them have pretty much the same size. So like they, and um, you can preview them. So you can hear that I slide, uh, pitch them up quite high. So this is so that they don't take up too much memory if I load them to a project. So let's do that. So now we have all of these samples in our sample pool for the project. And now let's add them to one of the voices. So I usually tend to use one of the Tom voices because they have the most boring analog engine on them that I will not use for anything else. So the first thing is we um, set the source uh, here to disable so that we don't get any of the analog voices. So you can do that by double pressing source and then you press arrow up, disable. And so now we don't hear anything if we trigger this voice. Okay, next we go to the sample page and now we can load the breakbeat 
to this page. So let's go for example with the aim and break. So now when I trigger it, it will play through the whole sample. Okay, so now the first thing we need to do is that we need to decide which BPM we want to play on. So let's say for drum and bass, for example, we can go to um, 160 BPM. So then we place one trigger here. And so now if we press play, then we can hear that it does not clean, cleanly loop. So what we need to do now is to address um, basically the tuning or the playback speed of the break until it perfectly lines up. So let's see um, where we currently are. And so actually we can hear it's almost a perfect loop already. It's just like, so it's way too fast. So in fact, it's actually twice the speed. So let's just pitch it down minus 12. And so we can hear that we have like this slight double trigger. So let's um, turn down the speed a little bit. So it means that we are already going into the slice here, which we would not want to hear. So this is a little bit of fiddling. And so now we have a perfect loop. And so we can now also um, check whether it loops when we actually play the full sample. So let's add a second page here. Um, remove the trigger on the second page. Okay, so we can hear that there's a slight gap. So we are uh, playing back the sample a little bit too fast. Still a bit too fast. So now this is like a pretty tedious process, as you can see. But so the cool thing is when we have prepared the samples accordingly, so now we can just load any of the break reads that we prepared. And so they will already be perfectly looped. So if I go, for example, to this one here. Okay, so this one doesn't have um, 32 steps. And so now you can hear um, that it already is perfectly looping. Just, and so we can do that with any of the breaks now. And so this means if we now put um, sample locks, like for example here, we could sample um, lock a different breakbeat. And so then we will always be in time. Uh, let me briefly remove the second page to make it a bit clear what's happening. Okay, so now we have these different steps here, which have a different sample lock. And so now let's go to the actual slicing. So I'll just remove these ones here again. Let's go for the aim and break. And so now we can just set a few more triggers here. And so now we can just use the numbers that we have looked at earlier. So for example, we can go for 60 here and we can go for uh, 90 here. And so this is basically just some playing around. So here we are in the middle of our 16 steps. So like usually it matches also nicely with the middle of the sample. So let's see what this sounds like now. Okay, not too bad. And so now we can just um, start to copy paste some of these triggers and just try to get something with some nice flow. So like, let's see. And so this is all basically just trial and error, like just try to listen precisely to the breakbeat. So like what kind of melody it has and what kind of flow it has. And then you can just play around with it So one thing that is very helpful is that you can copy paste triggers. So when you hold the step, press um, the record button or copy, then you hold another step and you press the stop button to paste the trigger. And so you can always preview these triggers by holding the trigger and pressing yes. And so this is essentially how I do breakbeat slicing on the rhythm. So now the last thing is that we also want to improve the sound a little bit. I like to go for a very crunchy sound with the breakbeats. 
And so the first thing I usually do is to increase the um, bit crushing or bit reduction parameter a bit. Um, so that basically adds a little bit of noise. So it um, just reduces the bit depth of the individual um, samples. And so then um, use the overdrive quite liberally. So lots of overdrive and compensate a little bit for um, the increased loudness by turning down the track level. So then you can also use the filter to emphasize certain um, components of the breakbeat. For example, like maybe a bit of the mid frequencies or the higher end to give it a bit more clarity. So whatever you feel like doing. And so one last technique that I really like to do is to layer breakbeats. So I think, for example, the Amon break layered with the Apeggi break sounds pretty good. And so we can just use a second track here. And so instead of just doing this whole setup all the time again, let's just copy what we did for this voice here. So we press track, copy, um, select another track, seven here, for example, and again, press track and stop for pasting. And so now we have the same breakbeat sound here. And so let's just go for the Apache break here. And it's, um, oops, sorry. Um, go to record mode, put a few triggers. Um, let's maybe go for 60 here and here. And go for, I don't know, 90 here. Let's just see how it sounds. You get the idea. And so just go from there, um, add, add more pages. Um, you can also copy paste pages and yeah, just go from there, listen to the breaks, listen to the flow and try to build up something interesting. So yeah, uh, that's it for this tutorial. Please let me know if there's anything unclear and if you want to have anything explained in more detail, I'll try to address it in the comments. And yeah, I'll try to do more tutorials on the rhythm. Um, so please keep tuned for more.